that you are indeed welcome. Whoever you are, wherever you are on your faith journey, even if you don't even have a faith journey, you're welcome here. We're glad that you were here. Let us pray. Something made the hair stand up on the back of our necks. Was it you, O oh God? Was it you that we saw blowing over the water? Was it you that we heard moving through those feet? Was it you that we felt in the beginning of our own hearts? Was it you that called our name? Come, O oh God, come to search us, come to know us again. Amen. 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 Join in our call to worship. We've come to worship God. Who loved us before we were born. We've come to worship God. Who loves us We've come to worship God. We've come to worship God. This is our God. Let's worship together. Join us in number 501, it will be on the screen in the second here. I can know without great people. Please stand.
peace from turmoil and conflict over which we had no control over. Just like we lit the peace candle at the Advent Reef, it is a reminder that Christ's child, as the Prince of Peace, will bring peace to a troubled world. And I don't see anybody younger than myself here. No. <laughs> Yeah. 
asked a woman, how do you uh, maintain this positive attitude and do the things that you do? And her reply was, his eye is on the sparrow. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven home? When Jesus is my portion, my constant friend is he, his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me, his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. For his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Let not your heart be troubled. His tender word I hear, and resting on his goodness, I lose my doubts and fears. Though by the path he step I may see. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. For his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Whenever I am tempted, Whenever clouds arise, when songs give place to sighing, when hope within me dies, I draw the closer to Him. From care He sets me free. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free, for his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me.
share with, with each other our joys and concerns. Thank you. We thank you and we call on your name. We glory in you, O oh God, our strength. You have told us to seek your presence continually. <clears throat> and we do. <clears throat> and we do that now. You've told us to remember the wondrous works you have done. We also do that now. You are our God, and there is none like you. Lord, we have sinned and failed and doubted this week. We have not been who we are in Christ. We have loved the world and ignored your word. We have forgotten you by thinking so much of ourselves. Please <coughs> forgive us. Lord, we desire this good news of your salvation to extend through all the earth. Bless our little town. Bring those who are searching into this place and let them meet you here. Let us be your church that welcomes all through these doors. Bless our elected leaders that they may govern and administer the laws with justice, tempered with mercy. Father, we lift up the concerns. Cheryl's sister, Linda and family. Lindsay and Callie. strength and confidence. Bill and Barbara and Barbara for some probably some added patience and peace. God, ben is having so much trouble with his back at such an early age. We ask that you Guide the doctors, give him strength, peace, and comfort. We ask your presence to be with the families that lost their loved ones in this emergency. We ask your presence to be with all those who have lost people to violence this week. Be with Andrew. He is such a joy as he faces his final chemo. We just ask that it would be effective as the doctors hope. We're grateful for birthdays. And we're so grateful for the vacation by the weekend. The volunteers, the kids that came, the parents that brought kids and helped and maybe had some influence based on that. 
we lift up these concerns, and God, those concerns that are too heavy on our hearts, we pray for your spirit to intercede for us with sighs and groans too heavy for human ears. Now, God, prepare our hearts to receive your word. May it challenge us, may it change us, wash us, shape us, refine us. Shatter our misconceptions about you. Reconstruct our values. Make us different. Make us less us. And you more. This we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Psalm 139. It's not on um, hardly anybody's favorite list of songs, except maybe mine and a few others, I'm sure. It's a short psalm, uh, 24 verses. And I have included as a handout two versions of Psalm 139. The new uh, uh, King James Version and the Living Translation. It, not to be confused with the Living Bible. Living Translation is actually a translation, not just uh, a paraphrase. And I included both of those Every way of a man is right in his own eyes. 
He justifies it himself. But the Lord weighs his heart. James, the brother of our Savior, for the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, for it cuts through the division of soul and spirit, of joints and marrow, discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. That's what God is concerned about. He's concerned about our hearts. And even before Jesus walked the earth, Confucius said, before you embark, embark on a journey of revenge, dig two graves, one for yourself, as well as the one who you are avenging or taking revenge and sin against. Yeah. God knows just about everything about us. You know when I sit down or stand up. See how this is a prayer to God. You know my thoughts even when I'm far away. You see me when I travel. When I rest at home, you know everything I do. You even know what I'm going to say even before I say it. You have hedged me around. You go before me and follow me. You place your hand of blessing. Think of that. You place your hand of blessing upon me. God supernaturally searches us. Then it follows. He knows everything about us. And when I say everything from the smallest minute detail to the biggest part of our lives, this is called God's omniscience. Now, when I was probably, I was in primary school, and our Sunday school teacher taught us three words of God's character. And omniscience, even today, I try to say it the way she taught me, which is omniscience. <laughs> and I have to concentrate real hard to say it properly. But there was omniscience, omnipotent, or omniscience, he knows everything. Omnipotent, he's all powerful. And there was one more. I know I've written it down, so we'll get to it. Uh, but look what David says on this. He says, this there's too much, there's too much about me that is known by God. It is so wonderful. He cannot comprehend what God knows about him. It's like trying to describe God. We do not have the language. We do not have the words that would accurately describe God. And that's what David is feeling. That's what he's experiencing here. It's too wonderful for him. Too great for me to understand. I'm the present. That's what it is. Uh, I can never escape from your spirit. Now, we know God is not a physical person. He is spirit. He is not bound by the rules and laws of time and space. David says, I cannot escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. There's no reason that should ever be discouraging or frightful, but comforting. If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I go down to the grave, you are there. And in some translations that's read, if I make my bed in Sheol or Hades. If I ride the wings of the morning, if I dwell in the farthest oceans, when I'm even there, your right hand will guide me, and your strength will support me. It doesn't matter where you are, where you find yourself, what troubles you with, God's got your back. If I could ask the darkness to hide me, and the light around me become, become as night. But even in the darkness, I cannot hide from you, my God. To you, the night shines as bright as day. Darkness and the day are the same to you. God's omnipresence, God, is everywhere. <laughs> we were performing at Baylor University in Waco. 
when I first heard this, and I don't know if it's true or an urban legend. But in the cafeteria, there was a big bushel of Macintosh apples. And there was a sign next to it that says, take only one. God is watching. <laughs> <laughs> Further on down, there was a big platter of cookies. And I imagine they were chocolate chip cookies. And it says, cookies, take as many as you like. God's watching the apples. <laughs> the next section of Psalm 139, 30, 30, 139. You have made all the delicate inward parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. When our girls were young and when our grandchildren we're young. I'm here holding Emily, or Sarah, or Bella, or even Sage. And you know what they do? They grab hold of my finger, and they don't let go. And you look at that, and they can grab, and they have, it's, it's, it's amazing that their 26 bones, or how many they are, are the same as what's in my hand. Everything is put together perfectly. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous and how well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion, as I was woven together in the darkness of the womb. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. It's been one of my favorites. We, had, we did a song in the choir. Now God's not bound by time and space. Humans exist in what is called a temporal world. In other words, I can feel this. I can move from here to there. But God's not bound by time and space. And there's a term I heard, first heard from Pastor Nancy. Since then, I have read it several times. A thin place, a place where the physical world boundary touches and even crosses over to that of the spiritual world. And then the logical part of me says, no, that's impossible. But I've experienced it. And that's where, when we are meditating, if you will, on God's word or on God's uh, protection over us, that's why we, when we feel that sometimes. Now, thin place can be different for each individual. Nancy, it was Otter Cliffs in Acadia. And let's see if this works. No, close out. Uh, she liked Otter Cliffs. That's where she could meditate and feel close to God there. Those cliffs up at the top. Jan was petrified and wouldn't let me get down this far. <laughs> she thought I was going to fall. God, you saw me before I was born. Every day of my life, now I want, I want to make sure we don't mess up here. Every day of my life was written or was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out. Every single day, or before every single day had passed, in the Presbyterian Church, in the Baptist Church, where I grew up, we call that predestination. And I didn't really understand that, because I don't think it's predestination. See, we look at turn, we look at time in a linear uh, uh, portion. Today, tomorrow, next day, that was Friday over there, Thursday beyond that. God doesn't see time in a linear, in a linear portion. He sees everything all at once. When I get to heaven, I'm getting there at the same time nobody is. 
and I'm going to ask them, you know, what, what, what did you eat on that boat? <laughs> I'm going to get there at the same time Elijah was. I mean, Elijah, he, he went up and you know, fired a chariot. I'm going to get there the same time John got there. I'm going to get there the same time David got there. There is no time in heaven. The spiritual world is timeless. David continues, How precious are your thoughts about me, O oh God? They cannot be numbered. God thinks about us, dwells about us, knows us intimately. I can't even count them. Yep, they outnumber the grains of sand. And when I wake up, I love this line, when I wake up, you are still with me. I want to... Uh, one of my favorite uh, Christian musicians in the past five years has become this young lady. And I want to share this with you.
So we've covered the first four sections of Psalm 139. Their prayers, their praises, their petitions, and their examples of God of, of David's holding God in such awe. And then there's this next section. It to his prayer. Oh God that you would slay the wicked. Get out of my life, you murderers. They blaspheme you. Your enemies misuse your name. Oh, Lord, shouldn't I hate those who hate you? Shouldn't I despise those who oppose you? Yes, I hate them with total hatred. King James is perfect hatred. Your enemies are my enemies. Well, that hardly sounds like a prayer of praise, a petition that would satisfy God. Well, David, in his next two verses, wraps that up. Search me, O God, and know my heart. What is on David's heart? In those places, he's talking about uh, God's enemies, the ones that misuse his name, the ones that <clears throat> show oppression to those that are less fortunate. He says he hates them with total hatred. And that's one of the things that God doesn't want us to do. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. David here takes that and says, hey God, I know I'm not, not doing what you want me to do here. It's like uh, a, 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 a Stephen constantly says, pray for the persecutor. Pray for, pray in the war like uh, uh, pray. pray for the Russians as well as the Ukrainians. Pray for peace, not pray for vengeance. Point out anything in me that offends you, and lead me along the path of everlasting love. I want to close with this painting. I'm still trying to find where the actual artist has it, uh, but it's called First Day in Heaven. And it's one of those paintings that I just, I want. It. Uh, because there's such joy on that woman's face. Search me, O God, and know my heart.
to dust with this one. So this song uh, was written by Leonard Cohen. And uh, it was uh, relatively popular, but never became a uh, top 100 uh, hit until after his death at the age of 82. Uh, it's a song about love, sadness, remorse, and hope. And uh, lots and lots of very famous singers have uh, sung this song. And I am going to try to sing <laughs> the uh, uh, version of it that was sung by Katie Lang from Canada in her uh, album, uh, Hymns from the 48th Parallel. I heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord. You don't really care for music, do ya? Well, it goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall, the major lift, the baffled king composing hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Well, your faith was strong, but you needed proof. You saw her bathing on the roof, her beauty and the moonlight overthrew ya. Well, she tied you to her kitchen chair, she broke your throne and cut your hair, and from your lips she drew hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Baby, I've been here before. I've seen this room and I've walked the floor. Used to live alone before I knew ya. But I've seen your flag on the marble arch. Our love is not a victory march. It's a coal and it's a broken hallelujah. 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 It's a cold and it's a broken hallelujah, 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 hallelujah.
you have blessed us with. We ask you to take these gifts, use them to your will, your purpose, in this church and this community.